These are the tools required to complete your hands-on exercises located in your binder. We will be doing item one and two, crimping the uh, connector as well as applying heat shrink. So out of your kit, you'll require the connector, the 18 gauge wire, the black heat shrink tubing and the white heat shrink tubing. I prefer to use automatic wire strippers, so I won't be using these today. You'll also need your crimper, your heat gun, and your helping hand. So let's get started. So first step, you want to take your wire strippers and strip about a centimeter off of the wire. You want to just give it a light twist so it fits in there without bending the strands. So you'll feel it when it hits the bottom, when the casing hits the, uh, the end of the connector. And you want to make sure you can see some of the copper wire that it fully came through the connector. You want to get your crimper and you want to use the corresponding color. So red would be for the red connector. And what you want to do is just place it in there and tighten it slightly, but don't crimp it. This way you can push on it to ensure that the wire is uh, fully within the connector. And then crimp. So you want to ensure that the wire did go through. Do a tug test to make sure that it's very secure and this is this is good that's a pass your next step is you want to take the black heat shrink put it over the wire now when you're working on an e-bike you're going to have to put the heat shrink on prior to soldering or putting a connector on You want to get your heat gun. You want to use your helping hand here because you don't want to accidentally burn your hand uh, with the heat gun. So you want to just put that in there. And you want to put your heat gun on low. You don't want to overdo it because you can crack the heat shrink. You just want to make sure it's secure around the connector and it conforms. You want to get it all 360 degrees. That's perfect. So it's fully conformed. What you want to do now is get your white heat shrink. Put it over so it slides just over that till it hits the connector and then heat shrink that as well. see it kind of has double protection just in case some water happens to run down the wire um, it won't enter that connector the next step on your hands-on exercises would be item number three installing the butt joint you always want to make sure you pick the right connector for the right gauge wire you can see there's three different colors on your crimper, the red, the blue, and the yellow. That's for the different gauges of connectors. So you always want to make sure that you're using the right gauges. They may not be compatible and you'll be forcing a bigger wire into a smaller connector or vice versa. So you want to make sure that you're always using the right uh, connector, gauge connector for the right gauge wire. So you want to use your wire strippers and strip just a centimeter off. Okay, give it a little twist. 
you want to make sure you're giving the, the wires a little twist so no strands, you don't have any stray strands. So you're just going to fit it into the butt connector. Now the outer casing here is plastic, so you don't want to crimp the plastic. You want to keep it in uh, till it stops and it, that's where the metal will be to crimp. So then just go ahead and crimp. And you'll feel it in your in your uh, hand that it is crimping. So you'll see, put a nice crimp on it, do a little tug test, make sure it's secure, not wiggling around. Okay. You wanna do the same for this side. I've already stripped a centimeter off. So you wanna put that in your butt joint. And sometimes it's a little easier just to have it in the crimper already. So you wanna make sure you're using the corresponding color. So you wanna just secure that down. Then once it's in there, then you can push the wire in, make sure it's secure. And then when you're sure it's secure, you can crimp it. Okay. So it's very secure. I can pull on that. It's not gonna come apart. The next step will be soldering. So the next step on the hands-on exercises, number four, solder joint between two wires. So we'll be soldering those wires, the connector you previously made to this extra strand that's in your kit, as well as uh, we'll be heat shrinking. So what you're gonna need here is your soldering iron, and you can go ahead and heat that up. Your solder, and we use a 6040 solder with flux in it. Uh, it's a 0 .04 diameter. The thinner it is, the easier it'll melt as well. Uh, you want to make sure you're using safety glasses so you don't splatter anything in your eyes. Very important. You also want to be wearing gloves so you don't burn yourself on the soldering iron. Uh, you'll need your heat gun and your wire strippers. I like to break off a piece of solder, a longer piece, and, and hold it while I'm soldering. Um, it's just kind of awkward holding the whole roll of solder up. So you want to make a little loop for yourself and give yourself enough solder. It's not fun when you only have a little piece and run out and then you do half a solder. So you're going to want a long enough piece to complete your solder. So we're going to start. Uh, by stripping about an inch. So you want to have a good inch there of wire in order to create a good joint. I want to strip an inch off of each side. Okay, you want to give them a little twist. And what you want to do next is make an X. So you're going to make an X and then you're going to loop one side over the other and twist it. And what you don't want is a few strands of wire um, popping out. You want it to be very smooth or else when you heat shrink it, it could compromise the heat shrink. So then you'll twist the other side over as well. And then you just want to grab both sides and give them both a twist so it's nice and secure. You have a good mechanical connection there. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Uh, you want to get your third hand or your helping hand. I'm going to put that in there. So always a good idea when you have your helping hand to put some heat shrink on it. Because they're very sharp very sharp edges on the uh, alligator clip. So good tip is to put some heat shrink on it. So when you're soldering, you wanna make sure that you're, you have your gloves on, of course. But you wanna ensure your tip is clean. So you always wanna start with a clean tip and you always wanna tin the tip. You want to make sure your iron's nice and hot. So let it heat up. You can see 
how shiny that tip is. You don't want to have any oxidization on there. Um, it's going to slow down your solder. It's not going to be uh, fun soldering. So you want to tin the tip as well. Make sure it's got... That's, that's just going to help with uh, heat transfer. So give it one last wipe, and you can see it's nice and, nice and shiny. Uh, now, when you start soldering, what you want to do is... You want to tuck your arm in to your body, so keep it, keep it close to your ribs. And that'll ensure that your arm is very secure. It's not, uh, if it's not, it'll be kind of open and moving around on you. You don't want that. So what you want to do is use the very tip where you've tinned, and then just lightly press the solder and never ever put solder on the tip to make the, the soldering start. You're always touching the wire. And in a few seconds here, it should start melting the solder and the joint will draw it in. Depending on the soldering iron you're using, if you're using a lower wattage, it'll take a bit longer. Usually at least 60 watts should be uh, sufficient. You can use 100 watts if you like. It'll just heat up faster and sometimes melts the casing. So you can see it's starting to flow. And you just want to go from one end to the other, never touching the tip. So that's a good solder. You want to wa wipe off the excess so it doesn't oxidize. Put it back in your holder so it's secure. So that's how you want your solders to look like. See how it drew it in even underneath? We only soldered from the top, but it drew it in uh, around the whole solder joint. So that's what you want it to look like. So your next step is heat shrinking. The next step is we're going to strip about a centimeter off the end and we're just going to tin it. So it's basically just applying the solder to the end. Again, you want to make sure your tip is clean. You can see it's oxidized already. So you want to have your soldering iron nice and hot and clean. So you're going to tin the tip again. And then wipe it on the moist sponge. You may have to do it again if it was oxidized. So you want to do this after every solder as well. So once it stays nice and shiny, you're good to go. So now what you're going to do is, same process. Make sure you have enough solder. Keep your arm in tight, tucked into your body. And just heat up the wire. You don't want to be wiggling around all over the place when you're soldering because it's it's losing heat every time you do that, and it's gonna take longer for the solder to melt. You wanna tuck your arm in nice, hold it there, and you have your third hand holding it nice and tight for you, and then just tin the wire. When it's ready, it'll draw it in. So what you're gonna do is just run your solder across the wire, and that's it. You wanna wipe your tip down again, in the holder. And it has solder 360 degrees. And your connector's completed. We'll now be measuring the resistance of the wire assembly. So you want to make sure your meter is set to ohms. Two things you want to make sure of is that your wires are not crossed when you're testing resistance. You want to make sure they're both separate. You also don't want to touch the ends with your skin. So make sure your fingers are away from the end of the probes. So you're just going to touch one end of the assembly. It's 
well as the other end, then you should get a result of less than one ohm. And just record the results.